Okay class, today we're in section 5.3, solve multi-step inequalities. Section 5.3, solve multi-step inequalities. Before, you solve one-step inequalities. Now, you will solve multi-step inequalities. Key vocabulary, inequality. The steps for solving two-step and multi-step equations can be applied to linear inequalities. For inequalities, be sure to reverse the inequality symbol when multiplying or dividing by a negative number. Example 1. Solve a two-step inequality. Solve 3x minus 7 is less than 8. Graph your solution. Write the original inequality. 3x minus 7 is less than 8. Recognizes two steps, multiplication and subtraction. Add 7 to each side. So plus 7 plus 7. After doing so, you'll end up with 3x is less than 15. You want the x by itself, so divide each side by 3. So divide by 3 here and divide by 3 there. And x is less than 5. Take note. They're telling you the steps, but not showing you the steps. So, you should know that when they say it add 7, you're doing this. Plus 7, plus 7. Negative 7, with a positive 7 that goes to 0. And you're left with just 3x. 8 plus 7 is 15. Know that you're dividing by 3 here. And you're dividing by 3 there. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so you're left with just 1x. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So the solutions are all real numbers less than 5. Your graph will look as, as so. That is, x is less than 5. So you locate 5, you circle it. Do not shade because it doesn't say equal to. Less than goes back in this direction. So you shade back in the less than direction. Example 2. Solve a multi-step inequality. Solve negative 0.6 times x minus 5 is less than or equal to 15. First, write the original inequality. Negative 0.6 times x minus 5 is less than or equal to 15. First thing we have to do is use our distributive property. So, a negative 0.6 times x is a negative 0.6x. A negative 0.6 times a negative 5 is a positive 3. Don't forget, negative times negative is positive. And then 0.6 times 5 is 3. And that's going to be less than or equal to 15, less than or equal to 15. Remember now, we're trying to solve for x. And right now, we're back at a two-step equation, multiplication and addition. So, subtract 3 from each side. So once again, you have to know that a minus 3 goes here and a minus 3 goes there. A positive 3 when combined with a minus 3 or a negative 3, that's going to go to 0, so that's gone. So all you're left with is a negative 0.6. Now what's 15 minus 3? That's 12. Next, after reading, you got a negative 0.6 times x is less than or equal to 12. You want the x by itself, so... Divide each side by a negative 0.6. And don't forget, you are dividing by a negative number as your last step. So reverse the inequality symbol. And we end up with x is greater than or equal to a negative 20. If you divide here by a negative 0.6, that will cancel out. And then 12 divided by 0.6, excuse me, uh, 12 divided by a negative 0.6, that's going to give you 20. Notice, once again, what used to be an entire lesson is now a step. All right, for those of us who deceive visually, once again, distributive property should have went here and then there. Okay. Next, when they say subtract 3 from each side, that means minus 3, minus 3. That's going to cancel. So that's gone. And you're left with just point, negative 0.6x. Here you got 15 minus 3. That's how they got the 12. Next, they say divide each side by negative 0.6, so you do that. 
negative 0.6, negative 0.6. You divide there. We do that, that's gone. You left with just x. And don't forget that negative sign has to be uh, applied here also. So less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to. And 12 divided by a negative 0.6 is a negative 20. Example 3. Solve a multi-step inequality. Solve 6 times x minus 7 is greater than 2x plus 17. And then graph your solution. Write the original inequality. 6x minus 7 is greater than 2x plus 17. Add 7 to each side. So, you're going to say plus 7 plus 7. Plus 7 here, plus 7 there. A negative 7, we combine with a positive 7, that's going to cancel out. And you're left with just 6x. Now, 17 plus 7 is 24. That's the step they're not showing you. So, once again, that should be a plus 7 and a plus 7. All right, that's going to cancel. Left with just 2x. 17 plus 7 is 24. So now you got 6 times x is greater than 2x plus 24. Remember now you got variables on each side. And our rule way back in chapter 2 was that we move the smallest variable. So therefore, you subtract 2x from each side. So right here you would say minus 2x. And right there you would say minus 2x. Now what's 6x minus 2x? That's 4x. 2x minus 2x, that's 0. That's gone. So you're left with just 24. So now you got 4x is greater than 24. Now you want to get the x by itself. So divide each side by 4. So you say divide by 4 here. Divide by 4 there. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So you're left with just x. And then 24 divided by 4 is 6. So x is greater than 6. So then, the solutions are all real numbers greater than 6. To graph that, you make your number line, locate 6, circle it, but do not shade it because it doesn't say equal to. And then you darken your line going in the greater than direction. Number of solutions. If an inequality is equivalent to an inequality that is true, such as negative 3 is less than 0, then the solutions of the inequality are all real numbers. If an inequality is equivalent to an inequality that is false, such as 4 is less than negative 1, then the inequality has no solutions. Graph of an inequality whose solutions are all real numbers. Notice the entire graph is shaded in both directions. Graph of an inequality that has no solution. Notice you see nothing shaded because there are no solutions. Example 4. Identify the number of solutions of an inequality. Solve the inequality if possible. We got 14 times x plus 5 is less than 7 times 2x minus 3. Solution. Write the original inequality. 14 times x plus 5 is less than 7 times 2x minus 3. Our next step, apply the distributive property. 7 times 2x is 14x. 7 times a negative 3 is a negative 21. Next, we notice that we have variables on both sides. So we want to put the variables on the same side. Here, there's no smaller variable because they're both the same. 14x, 14x. So it doesn't matter which one we move. So we subtract 14x from each side. Okay, now when we subtract 14x, 14x from each side, there's a negative 14x here and a negative 14x there. That means this is going to cancel and that is going to cancel. So when this cancels, we're left with 5. And when this cancels, we're left with negative 21. So we got 5 is less than a negative 21. That's not a true statement. So since it's not a true statement, there are no solutions because 5 less than a negative 21 is false. Once again, for those of us who need to see it visually, because we can't see the steps, this is the equation. We wrote it again over here at this point. 
we subtract 14 from each side so that's gone and that's gone subtract 14 X from each side so that's gone and that's gone so once again 5 is less than a negative 21 that is a false statement so therefore no solutions okay now let's take a look at equation B 12 times X minus 1 is greater than 6 times 2 X minus 1 all right first thing we do is write the original inequality next we apply the distributive property 6 times 2x is 12x 6 times a negative 1 is a negative 6 so now we have 12x minus 1 is greater than 12x minus 6 we have variables on both sides so we must combine our variables and put them on the same side notice once again that the variables are the same 12x and 12x so it doesn't matter which one we move now subtract 12x from each side so minus 12x minus 12x that's gone that's gone so I'm left with a negative 1 is greater than a negative 6 this is a true statement therefore all real numbers are solutions because negative 1 is greater than a negative 6 and that is true alright once again for those of us who cannot see cannot visualize um, this is the original equation from this point right here alright we want to subtract 12x from each side so minus 12x minus 12x and you can see that a positive 12x combined with a negative 12x that's going to be gone same thing here so I'm left with negative 1 is greater than negative 6 and like we said before that is a true statement example 5 solve a multi-step problem car wash use the sign shown gasoline $2.09 car wash $8 a gas station charges 10 cents less per gallon of gasoline if a customer also gets a car wash. What are the possible amounts in gallons of gasoline that you can buy if you also get a car wash and can spend at most $20? The most you can spend is $20 or less. Solution Because you are getting a car wash, you will pay two dollars and nine cents minus ten cents which is equal to a dollar ninety nine per gallon of gasoline let G be the amount in gallons of gasoline that you buy step one write a verbal model then write an inequality price of gasoline dollars per gallon one dollar and ninety nine cents times amount of gasoline that's in gallons we call it that G plus the price of a car wash dollars that would be eight dollars is less than or equal to the maximum amount which is twenty dollars step two solve the inequality write the inequality one ninety nine one point ninety nine g or a dollar nine cents per gallon plus eight is less than or equal to twenty we got that from right there all right now we want to solve for g so and we're working with a two-step equation multiplication addition so subtract 8 from each side so here you're going to say minus 8 minus 8 what is 8 minus 8 that's 0 so that's gone so I'm left with 1.99 times G what is 20 minus 8 that is 12 okay so now I got 1.99 times G is less than or equal to 12 I want to get the G by itself we're multiplying so divide each side by a dollar ninety nine so divide by a dollar ninety nine here and a dollar ninety nine there a dollar ninety nine divided by a dollar ninety nine that crosses out and that goes to one so I'm left with just one G and then twelve divided by excuse me twelve divided by a dollar ninety nine that ends up being six point zero three zero one five so you can buy up to slightly more than six gallons of gasoline. Okay, and that concludes today's lesson.